How's it going everyone? In this video we're covering everything new that got recently added on tvOS Beta 3. Let's begin. So, gotta be straightforward, if you watch my previous videos, nothing has really changed. So, if you've watched those, uh, the only thing they added was there's no more text on the screensaver selection. Where you can select which, if you like to include some aerial screensavers or not. That's basically it. But, to everybody else, Here's a quick rundown, and yes, I'll have timestamps of everything in the video description down below for your pleasure. So, starting off with the new lock page. If you have multiple users on your Apple TV account, you'll be prompted with this page right here. This way, you can select your profile, and everything will be categorized and separate from everybody else. This also includes API support, so all your logins for like Netflix and stuff like that will all be separated, so you don't have to share with another user. In addition to that, in the near future, this will be able to sync with your iPhone. So if you're using the Apple TV remote on your phone, it will automatically sign you in without seeing this page. But on the very bottom over here, you can manually disable it if you like the old fashioned way of simply just going into control center and just select your profile from here. Now the liquid glass design, you will see it on your Apple TV so long as it supports 4K because the liquid glass as well as the karaoke, which I'll cover more in a bit, only support is supported on Apple 4K model TV devices, unfortunately. But right here is where you'll see the newly added Sing app, which, speaking of apps, all these app icons feature that liquid glass design as well. You'll, especially in the podcast app, you'll notice it. But the Sing app, if we launch it, you'll notice it takes us to the music app. If we open up App Switcher, you'll see it right there. This, it did indeed launch the music app which takes us to the new sing category now the sing category this is the layout of how it looks like all these songs you see here oh cool it even has one piece too all these songs you see here are fully compatible but the thing i've noticed most of your songs in your existing playlist is all compatible on the sing app as well so if i go to artists and let's go ahead and select somebody real quick Aviche, throwback click on a song hit play this is how the layout looks like, very traditional to the previous one. It does feature the liquid glass design on some of these icons. But if you go next to the share play icon with the microphone, this is where you can pair an iPhone to be a microphone for karaoke. And if you look closely on your phone, if you're within a Wi-Fi network or if it's your own account, you can also accept it right here and hit accept. It will automatically connect your microphone to karaoke. And this is how the layout looks like. You could adjust the mic audio reverse. Right now it's kind of buggy though. But you do have the ability to mute lyrics if you just want to sing with the instruments in the background, but with no lyrics. And you could be the vocal lyrics. You could totally do that. And it works really well based off your vocal tone. It will automatically move forward with the lyrics. But right here you do have emojis. So you can quickly react and it does it in real time on the big screen. And if you like to add more songs, you could tap add. And you could use your existing playlists on some of your favorite songs. Or you could search the Apple Music library as well. Or your personal library. From my experience, it works pretty well. It's pretty fun too. Especially when you guys are like having a nice, you know, drinking session. It's a cool feature and only the host needs to have Apple Music to utilize this. Now the next new change can be located in the Apple TV app because on the Apple TV app, notice anything new? Still don't notice it? Well, the giveaway is now we finally have movie poster images for the thumbnail. Before, before they were just square images like this. Now it's all poster movies, even when it comes to its categories. This is a new improvement that they did you can still monitor like your game scores and stuff like that. But if it's a TV show or a movie, poster movie, thumbnail is what it's gonna get. Except for the top row for some reason. And quick question, let me know if uh, Stick is a good series. Apple's been promoting it a lot lately and I'm just curious if it's any good. But down here, you, this is where you also will see or notice that we do have like the liquid glass look. If I could adjust this, there we go. So liquid glass continue even on here, including the insights, which has been somewhat revamped. So if I click on his profile real quick, oh, I had no idea he was in Cars. I know he was in Night of the Museum. Yep, there he is, Night of the Museum. But this also has been redesigned as well, making it cleaner and more cinematic when it comes to watching like movies and stuff like that. And then if you used a volume rock rocker on your Apple TV, this is how the new icon looks like. It's redesigned, again, liquid glass. 
But when it comes to like new screensavers, unfortunately we haven't received any new screensavers. What we did receive is uh, the new ability to manually select what kind of screensavers we like to see. Because if we go into settings and go into screensavers and we go into aerials as an example and choose aerials, now you'll supposed to get an image of each aerial so you can select the ones you like to see and hide the ones that you don't. Hint that little eye icon. Now for some reason, uh, again, beta, mine's bugged. It's not showing me the preview on how the screen is supposed to look like, but it's supposed to look like this and it's supposed to work on every other category, such as earth, landscape, and underwater. Now, even though we didn't receive any new screensavers, a cool feature that we did receive can be located in the main settings. And if you go in video and audio, and we go into audio output, you now have the ability to, well, we always have the ability to select AirPlay and select an AirPlay speaker, but now you have the ability to actually select that AirPlay speaker to be the native AirPlay speaker. So next time when you turn off your Apple TV, it will automatically default to the ones that you selected. Before, this will automatically reset when you turned off your Apple TV, which was kind of annoying. But now, you can just run everything with AirPlay without having a bunch of wires connected to your television. And then in FaceTime calling, you now have the ability to use translation when you're FaceTime calling somebody. It will automatically translate it so you can read what they're saying and it will work the same way to the other party as well. And it's only available on selected languages, but something tells me down the line, especially once the release, official release is out, there's gonna be support for multiple different languages. And then if you're somebody who uses the Apple TV remote app on your Apple TV, layout was somewhat retweaked, but nothing crazy, nothing significant. You still have the ability to use to find my remote, which is quite awesome, but small minor update on the digital controller app on the iPhone, as well as the Apple Watch. But other than that, there you guys have it. Those are all the new changes and new features that Apple added on tpOS 26. Official release should be released sometime during the fall time, typically around the launch of the next generation of iPhones. That's coming up pretty soon. But as of right now, aside from the karaoke, I haven't really been running into any bugs to the point where I could comfortably watch videos, movies, and stuff on my Apple TV without me having to worry about technical dif difficulties. It's been pretty solid. A lot more solid than the iPhone side of things. But if you do run into any bugs, feel free to comment down below because I have noticed Apple's team does tend to watch my videos and uh, your feedback in the comment section it's likely to be reviewed and resolve any issues you may be experienced. So feel free to comment down below. It definitely does help out the community. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new on Apple TV side of things. If you wish to watch more, highly recommend checking out this video over there where I cover all the new changes and new abilities that you could do on Apple CarPlay. No, it's not Apple CarPlay 2.0, but it comes pretty close because you do receive a lot of amazing features and new tools that feel like it is CarPlay 2.0. So I highly recommend checking out that video over there if you rely on Apple CarPlay. This way you know what's new and what's added and what's coming out in the near future. Thank you so much for watching.